Yo, what is up? It's Aragatic. We just got done with a pretty good Twitch stream. You know, you can check me out at Aragotic over on Twitch if you want to tune in. We don't just stream uh, We can Karas Eras. We also play Rogue Legacy. We play King's Raid. We play uh, just about anything that you can come up with, including games that people recommend. Another big one lately has been First Class Trouble, which has been a lot of fun. Basically, fancy Among Us. But either way, this is an ace video. So something I wanted to go over really quickly is the gold shop. Okay, so gold shop, basically all the gear so far has been complete and utter junk. I don't know if it's going to always be that way, but basically we buy the first six because they're at the top. The meal coupon, that's good. I think it's like 10k or something like that. I would buy that. The XP jellies are what, 1500? They're also not bad for 5k. The glyphs, they're whatever. I don't really fully know. Uh, four star holy pumpkin, if you can find that in the gold shop, I'd pick it up if you have the money because it's it saves you quite a bit of resources. As for the diamond shop, again, we are only sticking to the meal coupons. Advanced summoning crystals. You can get three of them per week for 100 each, opposed to the every single time you buy them, the 150 each. So definitely pick those up as well. Now, originally in the past, I bought the foodie, which I thought, hey, you know, that's probably worth it. However, I now found out that foodie shows up in the gold shop, and now I would recommend against it. I have more foodie than I need at the moment. That will change the more and more I work on characters, but for now... It's it was a regret on my part to just blindly purchase the foodie. The one thing I can see people kind of making an argument for is either a the double card XP. Uh, if maybe there's like an event that's an all day long or maybe the special charms that you really need to get that next level in your gear. But even then. All this stuff comes with time and it's not something you should put all of your resources and don't put your don't put all your eggs in one basket because it, granted the basket is probably going to fall. And I don't know why you have so many eggs to put into a basket in the first place. Let's go to Guild Vault. Okay, so the Guild Vault and Arena I'm still holding off on with because it's tough. With the guild vault, I'm doing it every day, and I've got 2160 arena shop. I'm doing it, you know, you know, sometimes every once in a while. When I remember to do it, I'm doing it. But if you want some advice from someone that's been playing for a little bit longer, but maybe isn't end game, uh, I would say that the only real thing from the arena shop that you want would be the hierarchy soul arcana so this makes it so that you can use it for ascending your legendary heroes which if you don't realize let's go to uh my nathalia go to ascension that's these so you have uh elite uh so you have elite uh scrolls right and that gets these up you can get either dupes or you can get the scrolls and both will increase their ascension level now the number one that most want is Ascension 2. So with being able to get the, um, sorry, with getting the Hierarchy Soul Arcana, you are able to get basically a free dupe put into them, making their stats better or giving them an extra bonus ability. So the 4K is probably what you wanna go for. Uh, I have no clue how much or uh, if you've been starting from day one arena shops you should have by now like the tokens because i am lazy i am beyond lazy actually you know there's lazy but then there's lazy and then there's even more lazy and then there's me so i don't know what i'm gonna be going for i'll probably save for it but it's gonna be a long time coming otherwise maybe the advanced summoning crystals are good but even just the revival stuff is really nice. 20% crit rate, restore 10% max health at the start of the turn. Like this gear is good. And the synthesis from Abaddon, I, I haven't been able to use him. I can't recommend him. I can't tell you how it works or anything like that. He looks kind of like shadowy, maybe assassin type, but nonetheless, um, eh, it's all niche, right? Um, trial shop. Okay. So, Trial shop. 
100% ancient summoning crystals what you should be going for. You get an epic or legendary hero from it, guaranteed. We already have two, actually, at the moment. But this is something that is going to be very rare and going to be something that bolsters the higher end part of your account. Yeah, you might be able to just get an epic from it. Who knows? But the thing is that epic, even if you have it already, goes into itself. Bam. There's an ascension. It's good. Another thing here that you want, Awakening Soul Arcana. Once again, going back to Nathalia. This goes straight into someone like Nathalia. Makes them a lot stronger. Get them to Ascension 2. Get them to Ascension 4. Get Max them out with their Ascension if you want. If you're actually that wild, Max them out. Because every single one you put into these are going to buff up your character in a noticeable way. Otherwise, in here... in it's back to the whole, do you like Hugh? Do you like Harbeg? Do you like Andre? Do you like, do you want some extra charms? 220 charms, that seems steep to me. I wouldn't go with the charms personally. Uh, the four star holy pumpkin, you can get four of them, 200 each. So what is that? That's going to be looking at 800 charms for four of them, which four of them can give you one five star. Do you want to spend 800 for a five star? I personally wouldn't, but the advanced summoning crystal, because we this is a gambling game at the end of the day, I can understand why someone might want to go for that. Meal coupon probably is best bang for your buck, but at the same time, I would probably go for Ancient, look at these other three characters, if one of them really meets your eye, go for them, Awakening Soul Arcana, so you can increase who you got, and then probably advanced summoning crystals because there's no limit to it or anything like that. Event shop are from when you do the events, which is pretty nice. I wonder if we have any actually going on right now, which I need to get through this one. Actually, I thought it was a day and 20 hours. It's actually only uh, 20 hours, right? Is that what it is? Whatever. Yeah, I thought I had longer than I did. So I'm going to be rushing on this. But event points, you get 200 from this. Only 200, mind you. So, if we go back to the event shop for 200, that's not going to get us much here, right? Like, we could get this. We could get one of these. We already have 1,200. Now, in chat, I've had a 50-50 of if it's worth getting ORAC or not. And it's a little bit of confusion, too, as to why weekly limit of ORAC is 600 and you get 20. It costs 60 of them, which is the 800 version, to summon him. So if you go for the 21, you're going to be spending 1,800 coins for the equivalent of 800 coins. So no matter what, no matter how strapped for anything, I see no purpose as to this being here unless there's some sort of catch-22 that I'm not quite seeing. Nonetheless, I'm thinking I might pick up Orac and then maybe just grab the rest in advanced summoning crystals honestly I'm, I'm not sure i'm gonna look into i'm gonna ask around to people that i know and see if there's a reason that there's this much of a difference because to me i originally was thinking okay maybe it's a hundred um tokens that you need to get him because that would make sense like you have to wait three weeks you buy the 160 you buy the next one for the one week which is 80 and then one more but when you go to your, let's go over here. Um, where is it? Matrix. This is an epic as well. One out of 60 is a sun for Virgil. So why would it be 100 for that guy? There's not enough information there and it kind of makes me worried. So that's why before I say, yo, buy this guy, he's great. I'm going to say, wait. But if we're talking, if we are talking about how he is, he does seem rather good. Which one is he on? One second. Bear with me for just a moment. Um, because he is, here he is. Orac. He looks pretty cool. He looks, he looks pretty cool. There's nothing wrong about him, right? Um, his abilities read a little bit weird. Uh, when he attacks, there's a 30% chance to combo and deals 30% to all enemies. Crit rate increases to 100%. When you ascend him, 
his when attacking there's a 30 percent chance to combo and deals 25 or deals 50 percent to all enemies crit rate increases to 100 percent so the way this read to me is your crit rate just goes to 100 percent you deal 30 percent to all enemies i think the way it is is you have a 30 percent chance to combo and then it does the damage and then based off if that combo which is a 30 percent chance is there that'll give you the crit uh, rate increase which changes this kit drastically if that's the case because then you go over to uh here and you deal 100 percent damage to an enemy with 30 percent chance to apply defense down for one turn chance trigger increase to 100 percent upon a critical strike so if this gives you uh the 100 crit rate this means that's a guaranteed defense down and then this is just straight damage and some life steal and the last one is he removes all positive effects from a target and then deals 200 percent damage damage from this attack scales with targets max hp and it goes down to a two turn cooldown this guy is a monster on paper i have not seen him in action i have not tried him out but i do want to he's fire as well which will work out perfectly with our team which is something absolutely that i want to quickly mention so we have idrisia still we have nathalia yet. we've got azarina she's got some gear not the best she's got her glyphs going though uh, Zatlux, he's got glyphs, he's got some gear, not the best again. Kane, he's got some glyphs, he's... He could do a little bit better with gear. But the thing is, Kane is kind of getting, uh, pushed to the side. Uh, not because I don't love him, I do love Kane. It's just, he's tanky, but he doesn't bring in the offense. And as much as tank is needed... I don't want to sit there for 10 minutes watching a battle end. I'd rather get the right um, affinities and sign it, correct it up and line it up into a way that makes it so that he could just barrel right through. And right now he is kind of the slow poke of the team. Uh, we do have Urzag, but the thing is with Urzag, maybe now that I played him for played a bit, maybe he's a little bit better. But again, not the coolest character looking in any way. And if he's not the coolest character, why play him, right? Uh, Myla, I still love her. She has good gear. She has some six star gear. Uh, her glyphs are pretty well done. Um abilities are well done we're gonna go back to her but we're waiting at 50 for now because her bill her job gets done at 50. there's no reason to get her to 60 and use up the resources Melissa, let's get you off of here we don't care um so today during stream people were saying connor is absolutely amazing for a pocket healer which i completely agree there is one diff one thing though I'm on the fence between Connor and I'm on the fence between his name's Hassel. So the reason I'm between the two. So we're looking for healer is Connor, right? He's like a, he's like an AOE healer. He heals the team. Yada, yada. Hassel. Ignore his gear. Um, his, trait is he grants a shield with strength equal to 30 percent of max health upon taking a critical strike can only be triggered once per three turns his ascension grants a shield with strength equal to 50 percent of max health upon taking a critical strike can only be triggered once per three turns okay not the best it requiring a crit strike means that he's not always going to have the shield up however his a1 Launches two strikes, dealing 70% total damage to an enemy. Each strike has a 50% chance to apply ignite for two turns. This goes up to 100% damage, and it's based on the caster's attack. It has a 50% chance to apply ignite between the two turns. All right, next. 30% crit resistance to... Um, <clears throat> to i believe everybody maybe it's just him but he heals all team members by 15 percent of his max health so he becomes a tank and that's that's really good with a three turn cooldown on that mind you 
Last one, minus 30% crit rate to the target for two turns. It deals 100% damage to him. And the damage scales with the amount of this character's max HP. And it also goes down to a four turn cooldown. And it goes to 120% damage. So you could stack HP on this guy. He's going to be a healer and he's going to be a tank. He's not going to be straight healer and he's not going to be straight tank. But he's going to be both. However, one little thing. He, had, he has a chance of igniting. On our main team, we have Azarina. And she has a chance to apply ignite for two turns. She um, also has deals 100% damage to all enemies. This attack deals 20% bonus damage per stacked ignite on the target. So he can contribute to the damage of Azrina, our main DPS for a fire team. Connor, he can work around in different teams for healing, yes, but Hassel will exponentially help with damage. Now, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's not that big of a deal. Maybe it's not that much damage, but it seems like it would be, right? Um, I just, I feel like I want to go with Hassel because he's also pretty cool looking but connor should get put up there as well um <clears throat> what was one other that we were talking about jacob was one that was brought up um sierra was and santis at some point uh hackerin was one that was also heavily talked about during the stream where people were saying keep him to 50 and um he does his job well so he's someone that i think i will probably get to 50. i'll get him to 50 maybe cr with 50 as well and because his ultimate deals 120 percent damage to enemies to an enemy and grants max health up to all team members three stacks so cooldown four he's able to smack 15 percent max health you get to heal back up. He applies taunts. Um, deals 40% damage to an enemy with a 50% chance to reduce the cooldown of this character's ultimate ability by one turn. There's not much to dislike about this guy, right? Grants team wide defense bonus equal to 10% of this character's defense. Right? You stack him with defense on defense on defense, and you just smack anybody that tries to get in there, right? Like nobody can get through the defenses of Hakron, and you do not need level 60. Now, I'm going by word of mouth that you don't need 60. He very well could need 60, but the thing is, he's not my primary project right now. In the future, yes, because he's cool. But right now, I have so much water that I'm trying to delve away from water and go more towards fire. Uh, or uh, grass. One of the, one of the others, because we got Zalux as well, right? Um, for summons, we are... We actually went through all of our normal summons, which was, uh, it was time consuming. We had about 2k and people in chat were freaking out. They were like, you have 2000 normal summons, just summon them. Because what I didn't know was that you can actually summon, uh, you can summon obviously, and then you can go over to altar and banishment and you can look around in here. And you can find like your, oh geez, okay, I'm really bad at, there's probably an easier search function for this, bear with me. Um, oh. Get rid of these. There's probably an easier way to do this, but I had a lot. And... That's not rare either. Basically the rares you could you could get rid of the commons for 100 gold for sure um but you can sell the rares for what's up here which is the essence and the essence itself can be traded in which is pretty nice because the essence um okay wow hello uh <clears throat> that's not awkward that I can't find any at all now. Hopefully I didn't get rid of all of them. Oh wait, here. Right? Yeah, okay. So, 
Mind you, you're probably not going to have this money. I had been playing for a month prior to release and I didn't know about this feature. But basically, you can hold click on a subsection. It will choose some from that point to the next. Uh, that gives you seven of these essence. Let's even it out to ten. We'll banishment them because we're not going to use the rares. All right, The rares aren't going to be something we use. We have 48 of these now. And we'll go to him. Scroll down the bottom, Hero Essence Shop. So these can actually be traded for advanced gems. They can be sell, so, uh, they can be traded for jellies. And they can be traded for uh, advanced summoning crystals. And these summoning crystals, I cannot tell because the reset's going to happen soon. If it's for every 8 hours or every week. But nonetheless, you need 200 of the banishment crystals. And you're able to get yourself 5 of them. Which is a great deal. This is something I've been missing out for a long time. Because the advanced summoning crystals are hard to come by. Especially if you are free to play. If you were to go over here and you want the 10k. You buy one. 10k. Done. Why advanced arm? 10k. Done. It's not that much. But I will tell you right now. Definitely use it on the advanced summoning crystals. This was one of the biggest game changers to me. That I could, have, could potentially have heard about today probably. And the Twitch community, not just mine, um, you know, twitch.tv slash aerogotic, um, they're all great over there. They, they, they are absolutely wonderful. They're all super nice, super kind. They're willing to help you out every step of the way. They gave me tips, even though I they were like, wow, Michael, you're kind of stupid for wanting to do that. I wanted to. And they didn't judge me too much on it because at the end of the game, end of the day, this is your game. Play it how you want. I'm level 40 and I probably have as much knowledge about it as a level 20. But that means that when I get to learn it, I get to share it. And then maybe one person comes around and sees it and, you know, whatever. I'm glad that you got to learn something. And if you didn't learn about anything and you think that I'm really stupid, go right out and make fun of me. Because... The game's a blast, guys. It really is. All right. I play super casually, and I think that I'm not behind in any way. I'm not competing with anyone, and I think it's best for you not to compete with anyone either. However, if you are competing, good luck. Good luck. But, anyways, this has been Aragatic. I hope you have a wonderful day, wonderful holidays, wonderful weekend, wonderful Monday. Yeah, that's right. I said wonderful Monday. Until next time, guys.